Come on, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, hello there. I'm Nemo, and if this is not the first video you watch on my channel, you probably know that I'm really into retro consoles. Unfortunately, many of those pieces of history have been afflicted by a terrible curse. The old plastic tends to turn yellow over time. Why does that happen? And can this process be reversed? Those are all questions that we're going to explore in today's episode of Curiosity. For this episode, I bought an important object from my childhood. I know many of you are actually quite young and so you might have never touched one of those. I am personally very, very excited. Oh. Look how cool this is! It's a Nintendo Game Boy, a 8-bit handheld game console, launched in 1989, the first of its kind, also called DMG. Nintendo sold around 120 million units of Game Boy and Game Boy Color, its successor, worldwide. That is a huge number, if I could have all those Game Boy inside one bag, I could just go to Japan and give every single person living in Japan, excluding the city of Tokyo, one Game Boy. Not sure if I could travel with 120 million Game Boys though. Let me do a calculation. Oh. So I converted the weight of all those Game Boys in the weight of Boeing 767. And the weight of 120 million Game Boys is equal to the weight of 240 planes. Yeah, so not the most convenient way of traveling. As you can see, this Game Boy is quite yellow and this is not its original color. Let me show you my mint condition Game Boy from my collection. So you can see there's a big difference in color and a few years ago this guy was the same color as this one. Question, can you guess why old plastic turns yellow over time? If you have any idea, pause the video and leave a comment below. If you want a little tip, look at how the yellowing is not homogeneous. The front part is way more yellow than the back part. Why is that? At first, I thought it was because the plastic was absorbing some dirt, or cigarette smoke, or even human sweat. Gross. Then I did some research and I found out that the problem is much more complicated than that. Plastic is made of long molecules called polymers. When UV radiations from sunlight hit the plastic, they start a chain reaction, which will break down the polymers in smaller but highly reactive molecules that will react with oxygen. This process is called photooxidative degradation. And not only it will make the plastic more brittle, but it will also change how the molecules absorb light. The plastic that was gray or white will slowly become more fragile, but also turn yellow over time because of this process. This Game Boy was probably sitting on a shelf or a table in this position and was often in contact with sunlight, which is the reason why the front part is more yellow than the back part. And now that I think about it, this process is a little bit like a sunburn, but for old plastic devices. So, can we reverse this process? Technically, no, but yes. Let's say partially. The broken molecules in the plastic will stay broken. But there are different techniques to revert the color of the plastic to its original shape. One of those being time travel. Hmm. 
Unfortunately, time travel is not a thing yet. So what I use personally is a mix of hydrogen peroxide and UV light. There is a lot of contradictory and misleading information online regarding how this process works. My understanding is that the hydrogen peroxide allows hydrogen to bond with the broken molecules, de-allowing the plastic. But take this information with a grain of salt. What I can tell you for sure though is that the process works because I have used it in the past. So let's do it together, let's bring this old yellow Game Boy to its original glory. The first step here is to dismantle and clean the Game Boy. So this Game Boy is actually in quite good shape, of course except for the yellow wing. All of the buttons seems to work correctly, the sound is perfect and the screen doesn't have any dead pixel. The screen display doesn't have any scratches, so I have the feeling that the person who had this Game Boy was extremely careful with it. It just left it in a place where it was hit by the sunlight for years. Good news! The battery contacts look good, there is no corrosion. To remove the screws on the back, I'm using a tri-wing screwdriver. Delicately remove the ribbon between the two motherboards. Inside you will find Philips screws. I need to separate everything that is metallic from the plastic. The back part is not too yellow but the sides are a little bit. This is one of the cleanest Game Boy I ever had the opportunity to dismantle. Once I repaired a Game Boy that was so dirty and that smelled like horse poop. The front part is extremely yellow. I'm going to clean all the plastic parts with warm water and soap. In the meantime, I will clean the electronic contacts with isopropanol. Now that the plastic has been cleaned, rinsed and dried, I can cover it with a layer of hydroxy peroxide. Personally, I'm using this one, which is kind of like a cream and this is exactly what I've been using in the past to bleach my hair. I completely forgot to use gloves. This is something you should do. For this to work, we're gonna need some UV light. I could use one of those UV LED strips, but today is kind of a sunny day, so let's take advantage of that. I am a creature of the night. Light is my enemy.
This process usually takes two days. Unfortunately, the weather in Germany hasn't been the best in the last week. In fact, the rain and the clouds affected the length of the de-yellowing process. Instead of two days, this time it took me five days to de-yellow the plastic. But the result is pretty satisfying. The front part is now grey, uh, while it was looking completely yellow before. Also the select and start buttons now look completely grey, while before they were brown. Now that everything is back to its original color, it's time to put everything back together. Oopsie! The plastic screen doesn't stick anymore, so I'm using super glue. I forgot a plastic button, so I have to unscrew the motherboard to put it back. Let's try again. Here we go. We are done. I hope you enjoyed learning about this yellowing process and how to de-yellow old plastic. I think the Game Boy looks great at this point. The only thing I would change is the screen protection, which has some scratches. It's not completely perfect, you can see here. Um, this is very cheap, it's like three bucks. And you can also buy a glass one. This is plastic right now. If you're interested in electronics and you have absolutely no skills, I think the Game Boy is a very good device to start playing with. It's fairly cheap and every part of the Game Boy is easily accessible. Also repair parts and modding parts are relatively cheap too. Not only you can play with this de allowing process, but another thing you can do is for example replace the shell, like this guy here for example. On this one I changed the shell, but I also installed a backlight and a bivert module that increases the contrast. You can also completely change the screen with an IPS V3, like this one here. The cool thing is that instead of changing the contrast, the wheel here will change the intensity of the light. And if you press it, you can change the colors on the screen. I hope you enjoyed the video, I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to show you something that I do in my free time. Feel free to join me and my community on my Discord channel and you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. If you are willing to help support the channel, I also have a Patreon page. All those links are in the description. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time for another episode of Curiosity.